Chairman Whitfield, Ranking Member uh, Rush, members of the subcommittee, good morning. Uh, my name is Gary Seipold. I am CEO of Dominion Energy, headquartered in Richmond, Virginia. Dominion operates a broad portfolio of energy assets, including electric generation and transmission, natural gas transmission, storage, and distribution. Dominion Energy, the segment com of the company that I oversee, is focused on our natural gas assets. Today, I am testifying on behalf of the Interstate Natural Gas Association of America, or INGA. INGA represents interstate pipeline, natural gas transmission pipeline operators in the U.S. and Canada. I'm a member of the INGA board and the chair of the board's task force on gas electric power reliability. You are all aware of the shale gas revolution, the new opportunities it has created for the U.S. economy, and the rapid changes that have occurred as a result. One of the principal areas in which this has occurred is in the use of natural gas as a fuel for electric power generation. There is no question that natural gas and natural gas pipelines can serve gas-fired electric power generators reliably. Questions about whether and to what extent natural gas is used to generate electricity will be resolved by the generators and by policy makers. If natural gas continues to be chosen as a fuel for power generation, though, the pipeline industry is confident that it can reliably meet the needs of power customers, assuming that such customers contract for the appropriate level of pipeline services. Concerns about natural gas electric power reliability vary by region and depend on several factors referenced by my written testimony. New England has attracted the greatest concern in recent years, but it's not the only region where this concern has been raised by grid operators and other stakeholders. The problem in New England is that wholesale electric market rules do not allow generators to recover the cost associated with ensuring electric reliability and electric prices do not reflect these reliability costs. While generators in New England are acting rationally based on current market rules, the end result may be a reduction in electric reliability and a greater risk of blackouts that could be very costly to the region. The good news is the interstate natural gas pipeline industry has a proven track record of building infrastructure in response to market demand. In my written testimony, you can see a map of the 12,000 miles of new pipelines placed in service over the last decade. If the market provides timely signals that it needs additional capacity, that is in the form of firm contractual commitments for that capacity, the industry can add new pipeline capacity in a market responsive manner. A key point here, pipelines are designed to meet the needs of shippers with firm contracts. Unlike electric utilities, pipelines typically are designed with little or no excess capacity. In other words, there is no reserve margin. This is why firm contracts for pipeline service are critical. And in fact, the FERC looks at a firm contractual commitment in deciding whether to approve a new pipeline in the first place. In other words, whether the pipeline meets the public convenience and necessity. The restructuring of wholesale natural gas markets has been a remarkable success. As demonstrated by the robust pipeline expansion over the last decade, the natural gas model works. This success should not be undermined as policymakers examine how to achieve greater natural gas and electric power market coordination. Electric market rules must be reformed to value investments in reliability and to ensure the ability to recover such costs from those who benefit from reliable electricity. With such arrangements, the necessary natural gas in infrastructure can and will be built. Without such arrangements, the gas side risk degradation of the quality of service for natural gas utilities and traditional gas pipeline customers who pay for reliable service. While on the electric side, there would be a greater risk that parts of the nation would experience more volatile power prices and increasing potential for blackouts. Let me thank the subcommittee for the opportunity to testify today, and I'd be happy to answer questions at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr.